look at how to build a DIY CO2 reactor for boosting plant growth in a planted tank. Uh, first, you're going to need some sort of reactor vessel. I'm going to be using two 2 liter bottles. Um, this is where the CO2 will be generated. Uh, then it'll need to be, uh, through an airline tubing, transferred to the aquarium. You also want a valve check to prevent any back siphoning from the tank and silicone to uh, make any seals. Uh, also, you'll need some sort of diffuser. A ceramic or glass diffuser is probably best. You can pick them up on eBay. Let's get started with the build. First thing we're going to have to do is put a hole in the top of this uh, cap in order to uh, run the airline tubing in. To do that, I usually just take a screwdriver and with a little bit of muscle. It's pretty easy to, relatively easy to put a hole in it. Just needs to be large enough to run the airline tubing into it. Cut lengths to run from the T valve, in, in my case, to the ch uh, valve check. You always want to cut at an angle because it's easier to slide on. Cut it at an angle and take the, the longer end, point it through the hole, and then take your pliers, put them through and pull the airline tubing through. You want to have maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch overlap into the, uh, into the cap. Next we'll take the silicone and seal around, making it an airtight seal. These will run into each side of the T-valve. One here. Once I get it. Now when possible you want to use a brass connector uh, rather than plastic because uh, it's, some people say that CO2 degrades plastic so this may last a year or two but the brass valve will last a significantly longer time. I haven't had to replace any sort of metal part yet. This part gets a little more messy, so make sure you take extra precautions. Just take the silicone, run around the inside, you can use your finger to smooth out the edges. Just make sure that the seal is completely covered. You can do inside and outside, just to make sure you get it completely airtight. The final length to cut runs from the valve check out to your diffuser. Just select the amount of tubing you want. I'm going with about a fathom and a half or roughly that much. Just cut it off once again at an angle to have the easy attachment later. Hook it into the valve check and then hook it up to your diffuser. Now we're ready for the recipe. What we're going to be doing is uh, a process called fermentation. It's the same thing, or same process used to make beer or wine, uh, although we'll be making, or we're more concerned with the carbon dioxide. Uh, in order to do this, we're going to need uh, a simple syrup of just sugar and water, and then yeast. The yeast will convert the sugar in, uh, in the mixture to alcohol, and as a byproduct, create CO2 which we will end up injecting into our tank. So, first thing is we're gonna need about two cups of regular plain white granulated sugar. You can uh, either make your own funnel using a piece of paper and tape, or uh, just use a plastic funnel. Uh, I, for a two liter mixture, I usually do about two cups of sugar. Uh, that's a pretty good amount to last about uh, two to three weeks. Then once you have uh, the sugar in the uh, in the bottle, we'll want to dissolve it in water. So get some uh, warm, pretty warm water. Add it maybe halfway to a little more of the way full of water, and stir. 
can shake the bottle, however you want, but you really want to get all of the all of the sugar on the bottom dissolved. It'll take a couple minutes, so I'll skip ahead. As you can see, all the sugar has been dissolved. The next process is to get the yeast, activate the yeast to uh, to convert the sugar. I just use regular baking yeast. Um, it doesn't take much because this uh, these guys will start expanding. So I just put a little bit in. Let's see, I'm using the same cup as I did for the sugar to save dishes. Just a little bit in. Get some warm water. You don't want it hot because hot will kill the yeast. But you need warm in order to activate it. So find something that's just warm to the touch. Put a little bit in. Use your finger to move it around, get the yeast all uh, all wet and activated. It should bubble a little bit. Uh, it'd be first good sign. Break up all the little chunks. Take your funnel, add it straight to the mixture. Now the last step is to add water to raise up the, the volume and uh, limit the amount of space that the gas can uh, stay in the tank in the reactor chamber and increase the amount of uh, volume for the yeast to expand into. So to do that just add some more uh, cool water to, to the system. Raise it up until you're about an inch or two away from the top. That'll give you some leeway on uh, any bubbling that might occur in, in the system. So once you have it in there, just give it a nice little shake to let the yeast all move throughout the, the system. Attach this to the reactor you just made and you're good to go. The final step is to hook it up and uh, stick it in the tank. Pretty simple. Uh, after a couple hours, you should start to see bubbles forming near the surface of the solution of the recipe, and that's an indication that uh, the fermentation process is going on and that uh, carbon dioxide bubbles are being produced. So just follow that in, stick it to your diffuser, get it into a spot in the tank that either the, uh, the fast growing plants will take it or um, even better, in a place that will distribute it throughout the aquarium. So below your filter or um, by a power head and that will blow the bubbles out throughout the tank and let it completely dissolve into the system. So that's a quick look. Now you know how to make a DIY CO2 system. It's really simple. And uh, yeah, go ahead if you want to post your uh, success stories or uh, your... your um, videos on how you made your, your system and kind of the results that it, it showed. Um, send me a link to it, uh, post it as a video response and I'll get it up here. So thanks for watching and good luck. Cheers.